Next off the rank is creating, following the self-publishing uh, model, creating ebooks that will work elegantly on mobile devices. Why is this important? William Rankin is a medievalist who hailed from Abilene Christian University. We're talking now 577 years on from the printing press, but Rankin has some interesting observations that I'd like to share with you. But there are some things we've lost, and I think one of the things we've lost most is, is the sense of engagement. That's something I want to recapture. I want to find a way to use tools to, to get my students back engaged in the world around them. And that's actually not a new idea. It's a very old one. It's one with a great heritage. The, the earliest university is, is people walking through the streets of Athens, thinking about the way the world works and trying to understand it. And that's something I'm trying to recapture. The costs of higher education are unsustainable, I think, right now. The average student spends $1,000 a year on books. Yet those books are disconnected from so much of their experience. They're, they're hard for them to take into the field. They're hard for them to use even a few years after they graduate because those books have, have in many cases gone obsolete or been replaced with newer kinds of information. So, so somehow we've got to find a way to, to get students the tools and resources that don't just support them while they're at school, but to support them after they leave the university. I think there is a real challenge right now in keeping materials relevant. And one of the things that gets lost in the current model of publishing is there are only a few books that can make it out. So we, we lose the opportunity for teachers to, to customize materials for their situation, for their context, for the students in their classes. That broad ability of this new generation of books um, really opens a door for learning. I think inviting in people who never would have had a chance before. The, the great thing about these tools, it provides teachers with an opportunity to create texts tailored to their students, tailored to their needs, and, and to get those texts in the hands of their students immediately. And not just their students, and this, this to me is the most exciting thing, but to people all over the world. So that they put a printing press, not just in the hands of teachers, but in the hands of students. And I think that's uh, an important aspect that we shouldn't just think of producing e-books uh, to deliver to students, but getting students to create e-books, much like the, uh, the case study I gave with using sensors uh, for, for ecology work. I think it's really important and very engaging. Now, it's interesting that the University of Adelaide's uh, Faculty of Science uh, under Executive Dean Bob Hill, maybe seven years ago, made a big call. And that call was to try to bring the cost of textbooks down. Now, a general science degree, we're talking a thousand plus dollars of textbooks were required uh, just in that first year. So his approach was interesting. He put in the hands of every incoming student a tablet device, and that was primarily to drive the cost of books down. He approached publishers. He came up with a number of solutions, but as I pointed out, seven years ago, many of the solutions weren't terribly flexible. Uh, they couldn't take notes. Uh, they, they, they were really pretty inflexible solutions that were available. But yes, in that first year, students were paying a good 30% less than they were the year before to have e-books delivered. But the evolution of his story is really an interesting one, because two years in, he requested his staff to start producing their own book to, books, to start self-publishing. And in fact, more recently, it's evolved towards the delivery of open education resources, OER. This is a big movement out there, uh, essentially free text that, yes, have to be reviewed by academic staff to ensure there's quality, but there's a huge amount of open educational resources available to academic staff that can be used as textbooks. And it's interesting, in 2015, Brigham Young and Michigan universities published this paper that found that students using OER texts were doing just as well, if not better, than students using texts that were commercially available. Uh, really interesting work. Now, other standards have developed over the years. Uh, there's a standard that really is a consortium of a number of publishers uh, these publishers and companies involve uh, include folks like uh, uh, Google, uh, Apple, uh, the publishers, and this is called the EPUB standard. 
Now anyone who's done any web development, and that sure as heck isn't me, will be very comfortable with the format of EPUB uh, standard books. The beauty of them is EPUB is available on Android, it's available on iOS, it's available on multiple platforms. I won't be touching Mobi and some other platforms out there. So the structure of an EPUB essentially is HTML, in fact XHTML, Extensible Hypertext Markup Language. Uh, style sheets or CSS are used to, uh, to um, format these books. You'll be quite comfortable with it if you're a web developer. And there are a number of tools out there that are shareware, free, to use on multiple platforms. One of the more popular ones is Calibre. Calibre is a Java uh, solution that's available on PC, Mac and indeed Linux. And one can import a text file, let's say a Microsoft Word file, format it, use all of that HTML skills that you may have, and then with the click of a button, publish it out to an EPUB that's available on multiple platforms. So you would have an iOS version, an Android version, and so on. Another solution that's very popular is Sigil. Sigil also allows you to work with this HTML format to import text, uh, text files or HTML, and to publish using style sheets some pretty elegant looking solutions. Uh, it's a popular one. It's also shareware. It's also available for multiple, pl multiple platforms. And indeed, there are a number of solutions that are also available for very niche areas, uh, transferring PDFs to EPUB and so on. The commercial players, of course, are also there. And Adobe have always done some marvelous work. These are the guys who developed PostScript uh, decades ago. They've always been strongly involved in the publishing market. Adobe Digital Editions uh, is a suite of tools that allows one to create eBooks that are highly interactive and a number of institutions are doing some really great work. In Auckland, at AUT University, Hohepa Spooner has uh, for many years been working with digital content. In fact, these guys converted archived audio recordings to podcasts maybe close to 10 years ago in Maori language, Te Reo Maori. He's done some really great work. What he's doing nowadays is getting students to create books that really engage them. In this case, Maori students. Let's have a, a, a listen to Hohepa's observation. I'm teaching them how to use the digital publishing suite to create publications uh, based on Maori artifacts from the Auckland Museum. And with that, um, with that process, it reconnects the students, who are usually Maori students, but they don't have to be, um, to, their, um, to their language and their culture. Okay, this first uh, example I'm going to show you is this one here, which is about the Wahaika, which is this handheld club here, possessed by this gentleman here. He was the chief of a tribe from the Waikato, dist the Waikato district. And on this first page here, the students decided to create an overlay, a slideshow overlay, and it's transitioning automatically, but you can also transition with your finger to the next images. It also helps the students to um, can reconnect to their, um, their tribal connections, which in, in that sense it helps them understand where they came from. On this is an embedded audio file. I'll just bring the volume up slightly. So um, the song that you hear, the Waiata, it originates from the place where this artifact belongs from and it tells the story of the tribe and the connection to the place that it belongs to. On the next page here is the second component in the assessment where the student has produced a video. They've got to edit the video, do the, the titling, the subtitles if they need them, and narrate the story as well. Thanks, Ho Hepper. Uh, really great work at AUT. What they've done is recruited students not only for assessment as part of their academic work to create content, but they've also uh, developed ebooks for staff. In fact, the user guides for how to use my tablet device on the network, how to use my tablet device uh, for research, how to use my tablet device, were actually produced uh, by students uh, in their communications course. They're really elegant texts. Then there are proprietary solutions. Now, the digital solutions we saw from Adobe, EPUB, available for multiple platforms. iBooks Author is a solution for 
the Macintosh, for the Mac. It's free and it develops a very interactive ebooks, in fact they call them iBooks, for the iPad. Now it's also possible to export as a PDF so one can make a version available to others but it's well worth touching upon because a lot of work's being done in this area. Work for example, uh, pretty much as soon as this product was released uh, by folks like uh, University of Western Australia. In this case, a lovely text in pathology. Hello, I'm Tim Ingalls and this is where I work. I'm working with Point of Care Publications on reinventing the pathology classroom. There are limits to teaching with conventional textbooks and pathology classes. So we're working to put the pathology laboratory into the hands of our students literally. Our first project is an iBook called The Language of Infection. Let's take a look at that now. Open the iBook from your bookshelf. You can get to each chapter by swiping from side to side. There are different types of image. Galleries you can swipe through and enlarge. and interactive images. I've written review questions at the end of each chapter. I'll leave some of the features for you to discover for yourself. So highly interactive, uh, the addition of formative assessments, so you'll notice there were review questions in there, uh, really ups the ante when it comes to uh, showing the possibilities of ebooks. But keep in the back of our mind, iPad only. Now, one reason I'm focusing on it is uh, it's also possible to deliver e these to the Mac. The iBooks uh, app is available on the Mac. And I'm not sure if ITS have done a survey at uh, this institution, but certainly my observation is probably about 80% of the students own uh, Mac notebooks, so it may be worth exploring this avenue. Right, what I'd like to do now is show you both EPUBs, so EPUBs available for all platforms, uh, mo mobile platforms, uh, and iBook available for the iPad. Now I'm going to use an iPad, but the EPUBs I'll show you would behave just the same on an Android device or indeed another platform. So I'm going to use the iBooks app, which is where I store most of my uh, I, um, iBooks as well as the Amazon app. I'm going to jump uh, firstly back to my library. So here's my library. We can see work from medicine at Manchester, uh, journalism from Ohio State, II nurse from Melbourne University, uh, uh, histology prac, Cambridge's work, UNSW. I think you get the gist that there's a lot available. And for those who are keen on video work, um, lovely book on lighting essentials from the University of New South Wales College of Fine Arts. Uh, so really nice interactive work. But what I'd like to do is firstly show you an EPUB. So an EPUB using Calibre software was developed by a bunch of radiologists in the US. And they created a text called Cool Technology for Academic Medicine with a Shameless Emphasis on Radiology. So as an EPUB there is some interactivity. This is, I've basically jumped in straight away uh, to a chapter. I can navigate just by swiping. I can bring up some graphics uh, that may be worthwhile bringing up. I can have a look at images. I can make notes. So I can go in and make a note. Note. This is a note. And that note will be kept at the beginning of the book so I can go back for study and have a look at uh, the notes that I've made, uh, images and so on. Now I'm also able to uh, embed here, um, oh well, there is of course an ind index as well, contents, there are the notes that I've made and so on. Uh, I'm able to enhance these a lot more. One of the institutions that's done a lot of work here is Open Universities UK. They have a number of EPUB books available and using JavaScript they can embed PDFs as reading material within the ebook. They can have a, uh, a higher level of interactivity. That's NEPUB, uh, some of the, uh, the ones I was talking about. 
uh, are no doubt here somewhere. I've got so many bits of work from so many universities, it's hard to keep up with it. That's an EPUB. Any platform, some interactivity, but Apple went out on their own as well, adhering to EPUB, but they also developed iBooks Author, and I'd like to show you iBooks Author. So not only textbooks, but uh, workbooks that can be used for prax in anatomy, in this case histology. Now if I just show you uh, the work here, this is the work from Jamie Chapman at the University of Tasmania. When navigating an iBook, it's a matter of swiping through chapters. Uh, so here are the various chapters. I'm going to go back and show you the quality, and histology is something I deliberately chose because it's really all about the quality of the images. To get to the page, I just touch on them. I can make notes as we did before, so there's the note that I've made. We can have all sorts of images available, and of course what we're talking about here is histology. So it's just a matter of squeezing open that uh, image and flicking through to get an idea of the images. Very high quality images as you'd expect from histology, in fact higher images than they could be in print uh, as a handout for the student. So that gives you a, an idea of some of the interactivity that Jamie's embedded. I think it's really impressive that you can have these formative assessment questions. So can they be submitted to the lecturer? Not in his case, but because there are widgets, as they're called, these little items you can embed for HTML, yes, it is possible to submit questions, answers, and work from within the book back to the lecturer. So in which uh, of the sites would you find Highland Cartilage? Uh, external ear, I should think. Let's check. Whoopsie doobie. Uh, maybe it's A and B, actually. No. Um, I could try again, or I could move on and so on. So we can see that he's got multiple questions there and multiple types of material available. But I'd like to actually show you some more uh, work from other folks. Here are all the notes that I've taken, by the way, so that I can jump in there and do my thing. Let's go back to my library. And I'd like to show you the work from the University of Melbourne's uh, nursing school. It's about uh, thermoregulation or temperature. So let's have a look at their work. Uh, great stuff, I've made a note there. They have videos. So what is the temperature of outer space? Way out there, between galaxies. Of course, adhering to copyright. I can pinch to have a look at the chapters uh, as soon as we get to them. So temperature, physiology and temperature regulation, why don't we kind of start there and have a look at the sort of work they've embedded. So a lot of uh, multimedia is embedded in their, in their work. Uh, again, this requires you to download. This is not coming from the web, although some material can be streamed. You wouldn't want an ebook to be more than two megs in size. So videos, if you're adding a lot of them, you would just use YouTube and, and stream them into the book. Now they have the ability to embed short answer questions using widgets within the book. So here we're asked to discuss and then email it through a submit button. So we have a submit button that goes back to a server at the University of Melbourne. Uh, that's something that you couldn't do with the textbooks once upon a time. They use problem-based learning, so quite often they present a case, a nursing story, just as an audio file. So they then base a lot of the questions that they have around that case. Again, we have interactivity like a calculator so we can work out temperatures and so on. We can embed all sorts of material within these books. We can have questions and answers. We can have three-minute stories. We can have all sorts of interactivity that once upon a time wasn't possible. So that's an iBook in action, some of the work that's been done uh, at the University of Melbourne but there's a lot out there 